All right, well, welcome to our Dallas College Meets UT Dallas event. I'm Jennifer Holmes. I'm Dean of the School of Economic, Political, and Policy Sciences here at UT Dallas. And I've been a faculty member since 1998. It was my first job out of grad school, and it's such a great place to be that I've stayed here the whole time, really because of the quality of the students. So it's an absolute pleasure for me to be here today to introduce you to the school. And I also want to introduce you to our Associate Dean of Undergrad Education, Dr. Denise Paquette Boots. Dr. Boots is an award-winning teacher. She's a Rota winner, and she's also a Piper professor. So she is quite dedicated to teaching, and let me just let her introduce herself quickly. Hi, everybody. Um, I want to thank our friends at Dallas College for making this event possible today, and I want to welcome all of you to um, our Meet, Meet the School of F's event. Um, a little bit about me. Um, I also came to UTD as a brand newly minted PhD um, in 2006, and this has been my my academic home for the last 14 years. I'm a trained criminologist. I am now a professor in public policy and political economy, and I am a violent crime specialist. And so I do research actively. I've done about $1.3 million in research grants over the last five years. Um, and I study issues related to domestic violence, child abuse, parasite, mental health, capital punishment, and I'm also a program evaluator and the senior research fellow in our Institute for Urban Policy Research, which is an institute within the School of Fs that looks at social issues um, and works with local government leaders and nonprofit sector. Um, so I love teaching and I love my students, which is why um, Dean Holmes, when she asked me to become Associate Dean, um, I said yes, um, because this is all about student success and our jobs as administrators in EPS um, is really to support you on your path to success. So um, the best part of my job is seeing students do what they love and find their passion and find, find their calling. So um, welcome to all of you. We're going to show you first um, a little bit about UTD and introduce you um, via PowerPoint to some of our programs so that you can become familiar with the different degree plans that we have to offer you. Before we get started too, I want to remind our attendees that you are free to ask questions. In fact, we welcome your questions. Whatever those questions are, please put those up in the Q&A and then we will um, either reply uh, time allowing um, vocally or we will respond in writing and you'll see a number. I'm not sure we just uh, finished up the session, but you might see some replies to previous questions as well. So don't be shy and there's no silly question. And we have colleagues here with us on the call today that you're gonna meet in just a little bit. We have colleagues in our admissions office, our Office of Community College Relations, and our Assistant Dean in the School of EPS, Dr. Lanham, who is um, a wonderful student advocate, is also gonna be here to answer questions as we move through. So lots of friendly faces and we encourage you to be interactive and engage with us. So welcome. Well, let me introduce you to our majors. So we have we have all the majors that you really would expect to have in, in a school like ours. We have criminology, economics, political science. I'm a political scientist by training and sociology. So these are some of our our most popular majors in the school. They're classic social science majors, uh, but we also have some other ones that are that are pretty unique. So I'll tell you just briefly about international political economy. There's a BA option and a BS option, and then we have a public policy, which is a BS. These two degrees are mixed between, as I like to say, all the really fun stuff in political science and, and the basic tools of economics that you'd need. So you go up through intermediate, macro and micro in both those degrees, but international political economy is designed for people who want to have exposure of international relations. Maybe they want to go into the, the State Department. Maybe they already speak another language, they're fluent, or they want to learn another language. So we designed IPE to absolutely support students who want to do up to a full year abroad and you don't lose any progress to degree. So we worked very hard with that. And we also worked with the State Department to say what was the ideal mix of an undergrad major if people wanted to go foreign service. So that's IPE. 
It's a great degree. And public policy is one where you can really study the wicked problems that face us. There are a lot of wicked problems in 2020 for sure. And so public policy is a great way to do that. One thing that's unique about public policy and also a strength of all of our majors is public policy requires a minor and all our other degrees actually will accommodate a minor. And that's not something you find in some, some other schools on campus at UTD. Now, Dr. Boots will talk to you a little bit about GIS and public affairs. Absolutely. So, so just a little bit about um, two, two other degrees that you may not be as familiar with as criminology or economics or sociology or political science. GIS is the geo, geospatial information sciences degree that we have, and this degree teaches our students how to use technology to collect, store, manage, and analyze geographical data. Um, our GIS program is ranked number one in the nation in GIS science and computation, and we have some of the leading scholars in the field um, in the country at, at UTD in the School of Eps. That's one thing I'm going to say about all of our degree programs. Regardless of which degree that you choose, we're a research one institution. We're the only R1 in Dallas. And so what that means is that you have world-class faculty in every single degree program. We are active researchers and we bring that research into our classrooms, which means that you're learning about the latest innovations and theories and data and results that are going on in your areas that you're interested in learning about. That makes you more competitive when you come out. Your degree is gonna mean more coming from UTD. We have a history of excellence and we really have a community of scholars that we have cultivated across our campus and within the school. Um, for the public affairs program, this is where you have a program that's designed to develop skills um, in leading and decision making, whether we're talking about government service or the nonprofit sector or some form of public management. And so we have um, distinguished alumni coming out of the PA program who are city managers all across the country, including those in the Metroplex. And so you have guest speakers come in that enrich your classes and you have active research oriented faculty, as well as very gifted clinical professors who teach heavier teaching loads who um, are dedicated to student success. Every class you take, you're gonna have opportunities to learn in a very interactive format. So that's just a little bit about some of our degree programs. We'll publish links too that can push you to our EPS homepage where you can learn more about specific degrees you're interested in. And one thing I really like about EPS is you know, we, we, we are flexible, we're also interdisciplinary, and we work very well with, our, with our, the other schools on campus to promote students and their interests. Here are just three, three examples of how we do this. So we have three double majors, two with the, school, with the business school, our management school. You can do economics and finance. It's actually a very good path if, if you wanna go into become an entrepreneur. And another one is international political economy and global business. Also a great combination for people who wanna go work internationally in, in, or even domestically for companies that do a lot of work internationally. We also have criminology and biology. So if you're interested in that forensics route, that is an ideal way to do it. Those are three double majors, but they're not the only ways that we work with, with other schools across campus. We can work with minors and others, but we tend to be very flexible. That's one of our hallmarks as an interdisciplinary school. So, so two programs, I'm going to talk first about Fast Track and then I'm going to mention one other that I want you to know about. The Fast Track program is basically a way for you to double dip. So while you're in your undergrad program, you start looking towards your graduate degree and being able to take classes that count towards your master's degree. And so with a minimum GPA in the school of 3.25 in your EPS degree program, you fast track immediately into the master's program. So with an additional year beyond your your bachelor's degree, you then accomplish two degrees. Um, this is a very, very popular program. All of our different degree plans have these options available to you, and it's something that as a transfer student, I would encourage you to talk to your counselor as soon as you come in and you go into transfer orientation, they're going to talk to you about the fast track. So this is an initial conversation as you enter UTD and transfer in to talk to your academic counselor. 
um, your advisor. The other thing I want to mention very briefly is our Peace Corps prep program, which is also extremely popular and it is a natural fit for our EPS degree majors. And so this allows you to take classes and, and use your degree plan electives to meet the requirements for Peace Corps prep where you can, you are basically able to do an easy application into the Peace Corps process and you have prerequisites that they look for that make you a desirable candidate. Um, it also is a very attractive addition to your resume in the private and the public sector as you look for employment. So for students that seek government service, they want to they want to work abroad, they want an immersion experience and experiential learning. The Peace Corps can be an amazing program for you uh, to pursue. Well, I'm going to tell you a little bit about pre-law. Uh, most people think about, say, political science as the natural path to pre-law, but in fact, you can do pre-law through just about any of our degrees. Uh, and, and whatever your your major, we have a lot of opportunities to let you explore that that field to see if it's something that you're interested in. So you can pretend to be a lawyer. You can participate in moot court, mock trial, mediation. My favorite, the Innocence Project. You can work on an actual case to help exonerate someone. We have a pre-law society, LSAT prep, debate team, law school fair. Uh, here in the picture, you can see we have a we have a a classroom that's actually, it's like a mock courtroom. It's exactly the same furniture that you would see in a courthouse in the state of Texas. Little known fact, there is a prison furniture workshop that makes all the courtrooms in the state of Texas. And so we got our, our courtroom from the same prison shop that, that makes this for the real courtroom. So it's great way to do this. We also have every year we bring in our hundreds of alumni who are lawyers who come to campus and they like to talk to current students, talk to you about different ways that, that you can explore legal opportunities, maybe even intern for them, and learn about the different types of law that are out there. Um, I, I know for a fact we have at least six uh, alumni who are in the Texas Attorney General's office. We have a lot of alumni who are working in every single field of law, so lots of opportunities mm -hmm. here. So let's see, here's Dr. Boots is going to talk to you about um, about how our students get into the top law schools every year. And you know, here you might look at this and say, oh, well, this is just the top hits out of the last five years. No, in fact, every year we send students to the top law schools. Uh, in fact, this summer I was talking with one of my students who was trying to figure out, should I go to Harvard? Should I go to Chicago? Should I go to Yale? And he was trying to figure out which best deal he got. He got more support out of Yale and it also was number one in the area he wanted to go to. So every year we have students in this predicament of having to choose among top law schools. Some of our students you can also see here, um, you know, we have a we're a relatively small school on campus, but half of the prestigious scholarship recipients come from our school. And so we're really proud of this, and I think this is a result of of the attention they get. They get mentoring opportunities with with faculty, and we also work with our students very hard to help them refine their applications for some of these scholarships. So whether that's the Boren or the Pi Kappa Phi or Truman. Truman is a really fantastic. There are a lot of presidents who were Truman scholars. And then we have critical language scholarship recipients. So I just love to brag on our students. You know, half of these prestigious scholarship recipients come from our school. Right, and so so that's something to know. Um, we have about a thousand undergrads in the School of EPS, um, and our transfer student population, interestingly, is increasing every single year. So just this semester, we're up 4.2 percent on our transfer admissions. We're very proud of that. EPS prides itself on being a transfer-friendly school. Um, we love having Dallas College students come in. It's an easy transition for you with our pathways and and um, the advising that we offer as you come in. And as you look at the different opportunities that we offer, being a transfer student, I know it can be very hard. I'm a, I'm a transfer student when I was an undergrad, and I remember that transition. We um, offer programs like the Archer Fellowships, 
um, and it's not too late as a transfer student for you to get to know your professors and still have time to apply for those kind of opportunities. So we have work and study programs and students in the Archer program have gone to places like the United Nations to work, the Supreme Court. Um, I have a student this semester working on Capitol Hill um, and also working um, with um, an anti-death penalty group in, in the cities in our nation's capital um, who has a passion for capital punishment research and worked with the Innocence Project here at UTD formerly. So these are great opportunities for you for enrichment and things that we will be chatting with you about more as you come to UTD and you get oriented as a transfer student. We're also really active in pushing uh, our students to take advantage of the many opportunities that we've created for internships. So here's just a list of some of the internships that students have been participating in the last year or so. And just so you know, every single one of us, when we're out in the community, we are trying to drum up more opportunities for our students. As I was, I was telling uh, telling my staff yesterday, I had a conversation with District Attorney Cruzo in Dallas County, talking about how we can work with him and how he can work with our students. Had a chat on on Monday with the police chief in Mesquite. Same thing. Every time we're out there, we're trying to create more opportunities for our students. And one thing I, I want to remind you of about UTD, we have a special relationship with transfer students. You know, we were founded in 1969, but we didn't add undergrads until 1975, and we started with transfer students. So we started with transfer students years before we even started admitting freshmen. So it's a very smooth transition to us. All of our majors have a very flexible first chunk of that degree. So, you know, we don't really care what art class you take or which science class you take for that, that general ed. We're very flexible and we did that intentionally to support our transfer students. But yeah, take advantage of, of internships, career services. The first day you step foot on campus, and I'd say actually you can see some of the stuff we've been doing remotely on our website to, to help our students navigate uh, and be prepared for post-graduation life working with career services. But it starts with an internship. So one of the opportunities that we encourage students to look at um, is our study abroad program. So this is a picture of uh, Dr. Carol Lanham, who you're going to meet in a little bit. She is our assistant dean in the School of Eps, and she's a ferocious student advocate and a wonderful teacher. Um, she also is um, a faculty mentor to other faculty all across campus with her position in the Center for Teaching and Learning. And every um, summer for the past few summers, um, she's been taking students to Italy and to um, Switzerland, and I think she has a, a new one that she's lining up now for Paris, if I remember right. And so um, you're going to get to talk to her a little bit more and she can chat with you more about the study abroad program, but this is a great way to get enrichment and experiential learning and cultural immersion and language. So um, one of the best things about college is 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 learning broadly and, and our goal at UTD is to create global citizens. So study abroad plays a prominent place within that mission. Yeah, personally, I did two study abroads when I was an undergrad. I spent uh, the summer after my freshman year in Mexico City, just about gave my parents a heart attack. They didn't want me to go, but I was 19. I, I got myself a passport and I got a scholarship and I went. Uh, so that was fun in, in Mexico City years ago. Then I decided I needed more, so I went to southern Spain and spent the best year of my life in Sevilla. So I'm personally committed to having students, as many students who want to do this, to be able to do so. We have dedicated scholarships for students to do that, and even students who think, oh, I can never afford that. Actually, you can't. We have a lot of scholarships, including there's one prestigious scholarship, the Gilman, that is specially designed for students on Pell scholarships. So don't assume that you can't do that. Uh, we're really committed to letting our students have full access to the opportunities. Uh, so one thing you might want to do to find out more about what, what student life is like, take a look at our student blog. So Dr. Lanham it recruits students to write for us. Uh, here's one of the recent ones. So these are actual students, current students, ranging from freshmen to seniors, students abroad, students at Archer, talking about their experience. So you can go ahead and take a peek and, and just read from your, your future peers on, on what it's like to be a Comet. Mm -hmm. 
and in other areas of enrichment, COVID has uh, obviously presented some real challenges, right, for higher education. Um, one thing you should know um, is that EPS is dedicated to continuing to providing you opportunities to keep you engaged, to keep you informed, and to keep you connected, regardless of whether you can be on campus um, or you're having to, to stay remotely connected. And so we have different programs like Ask Me Anything, which are modeled after the Reddit AMAs, where we have an expert come in and you can grill them and ask them basically anything about their position, how they got there, what the challenges are, what it's really like to have that job as well as Pathways to Employment series, that far right icon that you see with the arrows is pointing and, and referring to your different pathway that's right for you and that not every student fits into a mold and we all have a different pathway that led us to where we are today. And then we've also had a pandemic series that's been going on that's addressing different issues um, and challenges related to public policy or the law or society as it relates to COVID-19. So all of these things are just a sampling of some of the programs that we offer. And you can follow us on social media and stay connected even pre-comment status. Um, you can come into Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or LinkedIn and follow us in the school and, and attend some of these sessions even as a member of the public through registration. You know, Dr. Boots and I wanted to just share with you a couple of things that we really like about UT Dallas and what our favorites. One is you know, we have a scrappy student body. We have a very diverse student body. Uh, you walk across campus and you can see it. You can hear it with the languages being spoken. We have a lot of international students, but we also have, you know, all types of students from different economic backgrounds, different cultures. It's a really fun and exciting place to be with a lot of different viewpoints. What, what do you like, Dr. Boots? I just love my students, but I think that I think the diversity of UTD is one of its greatest strengths. And, and so that's one thing I will say is is um, I've learned so much from my students over the years. And I think as a lifelong learner, that is the best part of being a professor, right? Is that you you're continuously learning from your students. And so international students, we're very LGBTQ plus friendly. Uh, campus. We're actually rated, I think, in the top 25 campuses in the entire United States for universities for LGBTQ+. We have a very active and engaged veteran center for, for supporting um, our military and our, our veteran population. We have a wonderful gender center on campus, which is not just for women, um, but it is for, for all of our students um, who we have parents um, who, who have children at home who are trying to juggle work life and, and being parents. So and I mean, being even more than, that, more than ever now, uh, you know, yes. uh, students are, are having to struggle with, with supporting kids in the classroom as well. We understand that, you know, one thing, uh, we really are trying to be flexible, trying to find new ways to support our students. You can see that when you look at some of the programming we've put together. Uh, you know, anything from, well, actually we have a funny one coming up next week, Slice and Dice with the Dean. You know, an opportunity to chat, chat with me and some of the other ADs and ask us any questions. And at the same time, we're gonna teach you how to cook, something that's simple that you can do in your apartment or your dorm room. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we have an EPS Entrepreneur session coming up so you can talk to different alums who've started their own businesses. I've got a big data and cyber coming up, security session with some of our alums and other supporters. I mean, this is all stuff we're doing remotely. We're doing it to support our students. Uh, COVID has been a challenge, but it's really it's really spurred some creativity in us, and we're finding new ways to engage with our students and promote them. And so, you know, it's been a challenge, but it's it we're up to it, and it's been kind of fun to see how we can we can change and what what of these tools we're going to keep even after we're everyone's back to campus. True. And um, I guess the other thing that I would say too is COVID has really stretched us all, right? And so it's made us teach in new ways. It's made us connect in new ways. Um, but as I tell my students every Friday, I have 85 students in a family violence class this semester and about 50 plus are attending every Friday when they can. But all of us have different challenges. Some have family challenges, some have health challenges. People have suffered losses. We have socioeconomic stresses. We understand that. Um, our goal as, as faculty and administrators is to support each of you on your own journey 
Um, and so our classes are going to be are going to be um, diverse and you're going to have everything from live class opportunities. 13% of our classes were live session this semester um, all the way to asynchronous online classes. And every class right now at UTD is being taped and is being streamed to our students with the availability of asynchronous instruction. So compassion, flexibility, um, and caring, right? It goes a long way. And as I always say, kindness is free. And so a lot of stress is going on right now, but we're here to support you on that journey and our faculty and staff are dedicated to that as well. well so let's hear next from one of our students. It's a nice clip. This is Whitney, who, who is, has been a student with us in, in EPS. Hi, my name is Whitney Sanders. I'm originally from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I went to Marquette University for my undergrad. I majored in criminal justice and law studies with a minor in political science there. I worked for a short period of time at a law firm and then was employed by the Milwaukee Police Department in um, cold case homicide as well as other departments. Shortly thereafter, I went to the University of Wisconsin Milwaukee for my master's. I uh, majored in both criminal justice and public administration. While working there, I worked at the Violent Crimes Unit in the Milwaukee County District Attorney's Office. And after about four years, I moved over to Corporation Council for Milwaukee County. Upon graduating with my master's, I moved to Dallas where I am currently getting my PhD in criminal justice. So that's kind of an extensive background. Why would I decide to get my PhD and why would I decide to move halfway across the country? Well, I think that it's very important for women and minorities to have voices in areas where they may not necessarily currently be. That being said, I decided UT Dallas because Immediately when I went on campus, I saw diversity. I saw diversity ethnically, I saw diversity gender wise. And once I finally made my decision, I realized that it wasn't just a ploy. UT Dallas is very diverse from the top down, whether it be faculty, professors, students, and it's not just, you know, African-American, Caucasian, it's, um, Asian, it's African. We have one of the biggest international populations in Texas and in the entire United States when it comes to universities. Right now, UT Dallas is ranked about number 23 in the nation when it comes to diversity, um, race and ethnic, as well as it's number one in Texas when it comes to welcoming LGBTQ plus students. And again, that's from the top down. Another important thing that I noticed is that UT Dallas has a half a billion dollar endowment. What does that mean for students? That means they have the financial ability to support students so that students can focus on their education and their learning. Right now, about 67% of seniors graduate with no debt at all which is very important when you're going into the job market. You don't have to worry about paying back those student loans. You can just focus on building your career. And that's why I think UT Dallas is the best place for students. Fantastic. Well, I want to introduce some of our colleagues. We have two, two colleagues from admissions uh, with what I like on them a little bit because one's an alum of UT Dallas and the other is a student. So we have Ryan Slack and we have Ingrid London. Then of course we have Dr. Carol Lanham, our assistant dean of, of in, uh, engagement and community engagement. And of course I have Dr. Sarah Maxwell who's also one of my faculty members, but she also heads up the office for community college relations. So we're going to turn it over to all of them who can answer, ask your, answer you some questions and tell you more about UT Dallas. 
Thank you, Dr. Holmes, so much. And thank you all for joining us this afternoon. We really appreciate it. Um, in admissions, we are here to support you. So please do not ever hesitate to contact us. We have admissions counselors for every college. So um, please feel free to get in contact with us. Our entire job is to support you as you are exploring different universities, connecting with all things UT Dallas, and then of course, navigating that admissions process. So in that regards, uh, my colleague Ryan Slack has a quick presentation on admissions and what that process looks like. Hello, my name is Ryan Slack. I'm the Director of Undergraduate Admissions in the Office of Admission and Enrollment. And today I'll be touching on some useful transfer tools, the application process, admission requirements, and also a couple scholarship opportunities for transfer students. Now, this page is our transfer credit page, and it is where we've tried to compile all of the useful transfer tools in one place. The first link I'd like to point out is the transfer equivalencies table. If you click on that, you can enter the name of your current or previous institution along with the course prefix, and it will automatically load all of those courses and show you how they will transfer to UT Dallas. This is incredibly useful for students who are maybe trying to look back at the courses they've completed and see how those will transfer. The second link on this page is called transfer plans, and this is where we house all of our various transfer plans for every single undergraduate degree that we offer at the university. These plans are set up so that they show you the recommended UT Dallas courses along with the equivalents at any Texas community college all in one convenient place. So once you know what major you'd like to pursue, I recommend printing off the transfer plan for your major and using that as a guide as you select your courses moving forward. Another opportunity we have for prospective transfer students is Common Connection, and this is a partnership we have with every community college in the state. The main benefits that students get excited about within this program is going to be the ability to lock in your tuition rate early and for five years, uh, which is a huge benefit there, and then also the opportunity to meet with academic advisors. So being a Common Connection member, you can actually go speak with an advisor in your academic department at UT Dallas and have more in-depth discussions with them about the courses you'll be taking down the road and also take a detailed look at some of your degree plans. Um, to be eligible for this program, you just need to be a currently enrolled student at any Texas community college with at least 12 credit hours there. You need to be in good academic standing and you need to complete the pre-admission agreement, which you can find at utdallas.edu slash connect, which you'll see on the screen. And once you have that pre-admission form filled out and signed, you can email it to admission at utdallas.edu and we will get you signed up. As far as the application process itself, it is luckily fairly straightforward, and this is an application checklist you can follow as you move through the process. The first step is to apply at Apply Texas. There is a $50 application fee, and then you need to follow up with official transcripts from all previously attended colleges and universities. You have the option to turn in a resume, essay, and up to three letters of recommendation, and then international students will be asked to provide an English proficiency score. Now, as far as when you should get all of this done, you can see there are priority deadlines for every term, and then there are also regular deadlines for both domestic and international students. We highly recommend that you try to get everything turned in by the priority deadline to guarantee that you'll have ample time to apply for scholarships and also get financial aid in order. However, if you can't meet that priority deadline, please make sure that your application and all supporting documents are in by the regular deadline at the latest. Once you've submitted your application and all supporting documents, your application will be reviewed by the admissions committee. It's a holistic review process and you can see the various factors that they're going to be looking at here. The main ones they'll be focusing on will be your cumulative GPA and overall academic performance. They will be looking at your performance in major prerequisite courses, and they will also read through all of your optional documents that you've submitted, such as the resume, the essay, and up to three letters of recommendation. All of that will be taken into consideration before a decision is made. Now you can qualify for assured admission if you have between 42 and 90 transferable hours with a 3.0 GPA, or if you are a Common Connection member with an associate's degree, AAAS or AAT with a 3.0, and you're in good standing at the last college attended. Please note that anyone with fewer than 30 credit hours are recommended to go ahead and submit their high school transcript, SAT or ACT scores, and also the essay so that the committee has more information to review. Now, one of the scholarships I'd like to talk about today is the Comet Transfer Scholarship. This is offered for the fall and spring semesters for Texas residents who have between 30 and 90 transferable credit hours and a GPA falling before, between 3.0 and 4.0. Um, this award is issued automatically, so there's no additional application process for applicants, and the award will be issued depending on where your GPA falls on the scale. The second scholarship I'd like to touch on today is the Phi Theta Kappa Scholarship, or PTK Award. 
Um, students who qualify for this award must be able to provide proof of PTK membership, and they also need to be Texas residents at the time of admission with between 30 and 90 transferable credit hours and a 3.5 GPA. This is awarded automatically for qualifying students, and it does stack with the Comet Transfer Scholarship. It's also important to note that the two scholarships we touched on are not the only opportunities for transfer students. There are plenty of other awards they can apply for, and more information on those is available on our financial aid webpage. For more information, please feel free to contact us at any time by emailing admission at utdallas.edu, and a list of all of our virtual resources can be found at the URL on this slide. Thank you so much for your attention and for taking the time to visit with us today. All right, well, I think now we can open it up for questions. It looks like, oh boy, we've got a lot. We've got a lot in the chat already. That's excellent. Holmes, we should also introduce um, Dr. Lanham and, and oh, Dr. Max let's well. let them introduce themselves. Dr. Lanham, do you want to start? So yeah, I'd be glad to start. Hello, everybody. I'm Carol Cerulli Lanham, and I am talking to you from our beautiful campus. I'm in my office. It's um, a sunny day out there. Everything is clean and sanitized, and we look forward to welcoming you to the beautiful campus that you saw in the video. Um, I teach the freshmen, and so we have a freshman seminar this afternoon called Critical Issues in the social sciences. But as assistant dean of outreach and engagement, I interact with students at all levels in our school, which is one of the best parts of my job. I also teach in the sociology program. And one of the, the most fun things that I do is I get to teach abroad for the last two years. I've been able to teach in Rome, um, Italy, and Lugano, Switzerland, which you heard about in the presentation. And then the plan is to teach in Paris, France. Now, these are called faculty lab programs because you go abroad with a faculty member like me. I have colleagues that are doing the same. And then you're with other UT Dallas students. And it's been so great to see the friendships that have formed when the students are together overseas. They tend to be friends for life after an experience like that. And while our programs are on hold as we wait for it to be safe again to travel abroad, we're doing some other interesting things in my classes and other colleagues plan to do the same. And, and it's called virtual exchange. And I am connecting my students who are here in Dallas, Texas with students in Bordeaux, France, which is where sociology was first introduced into the college curriculum. And we're doing a pandemic project where students are out doing observational research in the field to see how the norms differ here in the United States versus France. So although I am on campus, we, we try to use the world as our classroom as well whenever possible. So I hope to meet many of you soon and thank you for giving me the opportunity to introduce myself. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lanham. We got to hear from Dr. Maxwell now here as well. Hi, everybody. I'm Sarah Maxwell. I'm the assistant provost in the Office of Community College Relations, and I'm so happy to be talking to you today, but I won't take too much time because I know we have a lot of questions. Um, I'm also a faculty member in EPS, and I absolutely love working in EPS because it's so interdisciplinary. So I teach and study um, mostly uh, some public health, social policy. My degree is actually in public policy, but I'm very interested in disease and patient experiences. So I work with our GIS faculty and I look at Lyme disease and spatial temporal dimensions of tick-borne illness. And I have a grant to um, assess Lyme and tick-borne illness among seasonal farm workers in Texas. And I work very closely with other nonprofits such as the National Center for Farm Worker Health. But in my role as assistant provost in the Office of Community College Relations, I work very closely with Dallas College and we work um, constantly to try and improve and facilitate the transfer experience for all of you. And I just can't wait to see you at UT Dallas and thank you so much for joining us today. All right, well, let's check out some of those questions. I just looked at one that asked about can they see some other faculty videos? And yes, I'm going to post, we have 
um, our community and speaker series. And if you go to our social media, I'm going to post that in a minute. You can see our YouTube channel and that's where we put a lot of our, our content. We have some other faculty lectures. So if you want to explore a different a different possible major, you can do so and you can hear from us as well. We have some other content out there. Yeah. We also got a question, Dean Holmes, asking what are you doing to ensure students, faculty and staff are safe during COVID? So um, I do public health research as well, and I teach on global public health. I was actually teaching that class just prior to the pandemic breaking and then was teaching a mental health class as it broke. So I felt very, very relevant and timely at the, that semester. Um, I can tell you that UTD has been excellent about communicating that the, truly the health of uh, our students, our staff, and our faculty are paramount. And so the very difficult decision was made about moving the majority of our classes remote um, or to online instruction. And those that are on campus, like Dr. Lanham just said, uh, the campus is being sanitized literally many times a day. Uh, masks are mandatory in all common areas. That is being enforced to ensure the health and the welfare of everyone that's on campus. Um, we look forward to the day that we are all back on campus together. I can't even express to you how much I miss seeing my students in particular, but also my colleagues. And there is just such a positive energy on our campus. And you saw from that aerial shot as we started the session today, um, UTD is just full of outside spaces that make it a very special place, whether, whether it's sitting under one of the magnolia trees on our main mall with the reflection ponds, or finding a quiet corner um, on the edge of campus next to a pond, or I mean, just sitting there and being there is a wonderful experience. And I miss the, the, the energy and that I feel in Green Hall in particular, where many of our social science faculty um, are housed and our administrative offices are. So rest assured that um, we get regular updates. They're doing tracking of all cases and there's been transparency. And I think that's an important term to use when we talk about COVID. Uh, UTD is committed to transparency so that we can all be informed as we um, gradually return to campus and we look forward to that day. Yeah, we're definitely excited about welcoming more students on campus and people are there. I mean, we have yes. uh, just about 20% of our classes have are in person either all the time or on a rotation basis, but even those classes allow students the opportunity to participate off off scheduled time and, and off campus. And we do that just knowing, you know, students might have to work or miss class someday or maybe God forbid they're sick or somebody in their family is sick and they have to they have to add some extra obligations. So we've really worked to make a full range of options that work both for our students and our faculty and it's really kept morale up and I think it's most importantly it's kept our students on track because that is one thing you know one little stinky pandemic isn't going to stop us we're going to keep working to keep our students on track and promote them and get them graduated so that's a commitment we're making it's uh like i said before it's forced us to innovate and a lot of these things we're going to keep um, i'm so excited that we can engage so many of our alums who are working outside of the area we can bring them in on these remote platforms and have them talk to students uh, we had one who's a who's a top operative in in California in in politics, and he talked to students about his career path. You know that would have been so much more difficult before. I have another alumna who's in D.C. with a with another firm that she started. She's participating in our Apps Entrepreneurs next week, and she's able to do it because we're doing things remote. So a lot of these things that we've come up with, we're going to keep. Um, so you can check our website on our community and speaker series and you can actually see some of them because we've recorded them. So I want you to participate. Uh, if you're admitted, you'll start getting an invitation to these things even before you come on campus. Yeah, and so the, I guess the one thing I would add to Dean Holmes um, as we close out this session today um, is, is just know that whatever your needs are, whether you're a first generation student, whether you're having socioeconomic challenges, whether you're looking for internship and employment, um, when you become a UTD student and a student in the School of Epps, we have a host of resources and we open those resources to you. Um, our goal is to get you to degree completion. 
We want you to get your degree from UTD. We want you to join that club of UTD alumni um, and reach your goals. So more than anything, we want to thank you for making time in a very hectic time for everybody. I want to thank all my colleagues from UTD that helped to support our event, and we want to thank our friends at Dallas College. Um, we are, are so proud of our relationship with Dallas College. We love the students um, here at Dallas College, and we want you to know that you belong at UTD. We are excited to have you come to join us. Um, thank you for making the time today. Please check out our YouTube channel. Please join us on social media. And uh, we are wishing you and your loved ones safe and healthy. So stay positive, stay safe, stay healthy, and we hope to see you soon on our campus. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Thank you.